Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to ET Health World's live webinar on impact of artificial intelligence in cervical health and screening. According to the World Health Organization, cervical cancer is one of the most preventable and treatable forms of cancer. However, cases of cervical cancer are rising in India at an alarming rate, with the disease claiming one woman's life every eight minutes. To deliberate on the incidence of disease, importance of health screening in women, and role of new age technologies for quick and safe diagnosis of cervical cancer, I, Rashmi Mabian, have been joined by an esteemed panel, Dr. Vijaya, Director, Institute of Obstetrics Gynecology at Edmore Medical College, Dr. Narendra Malhotra, MD Global Rainbow Healthcare and past president of Foxy, Dr. Malaika Samuel, consultant gynecologist at Brainworks, Mobile OTD, Apollo First Medical Hospital, Mr. S. Ganesh Prasad, founder and MD of Genworks Health, and Dr. Thank Alexander you. Zimmer, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Rothlaw Medical University. Thank you all the experts for joining us today. So I would like to inform that we will be having a Q&A session so all attendees can share their questions in the chat window during the panel discussion. According to a data in a population of 1.3 billion, every 25.3 women per one lakh is diagnosed with cervical cancer in India. Approximately one lakh 25,000 women get diagnosed with cervical cancer every year and 70,000 to 80,000 succumb to this death. And with this, we will begin by understanding from Dr. Vijaya, why is there such a high incidence of cervical cancer in India as compared to the Western world? Yeah, very true. Uh, so many people are unaware there is a screening that exists. The first point is uh, it is not uh, seen visibly. Uh, like breast cancer, where the people can notice immediately if there is a change in the uh, size of the breast or there is any bleeding or discharge. Whereas the service is a hidden part uh, inside our genitalia and people are very, very apprehensive to go for an uh, annual checkup uh, because they are not uh, that much illiterate and also the uh, lack of awareness of uh, screening, that is the uh, utmost important point. Uh, but the only positive in uh, uh, cervical cancer is it presents with bleeding and white discharge but then by the time it is delayed the cancer has already come into us what our aim today is to detect it in the pre-invasive stage uh, so more of uh, uh, health education and especially starting with the school is more important to create awareness so when we talk about the lack of awareness and on on uh, being the contributory factors what are the other factors do you think are uh, causing this uh, rise in the uh, cervical cancer? Uh, like, uh, you know, this 25% uh, 25 per 1 lakh is the incidence of cervical cancer and it's more common in the developing countries. And in our state, Tamil Nadu, uh, part of India, where we are the foremost runner of the healthcare programs and we are the number one, we can, I can boldly say Narendra Sair is there, but still I can boldly say Tamil Nadu is one of the, uh, the best in the healthcare program implementation. Uh, so we have started training our staff nurses in detecting the pre-invasive cervical lesion at the earliest. Uh, so we have just now started and we have included the cancer also in the non-communicable disease program and so the, we are targeting on the staff nurses uh, that is where we can reach the innermost part of the village thank you thank you dr vijaya now we understand that cervical cancer can be cured if diagnosed at early stage to know how regular screening makes such a huge difference i would like to come to you dr narendra how according to you do gynecologists play a crucial role in prevention of cervical cancer adding to dr vijaya's I did my residency uh, in Pondicherry under Dr. Rajaram. We had an Ethicon Fellowship. And uh, that place was like the, the cancer cervix uh, uh, hub. And we saw so many operations on that coastal and so many cases that we were shocked that India has so much cancer in the coastal India. Probably because of sailors coming in and promiscuity and all that. And we had a fantastic um, build-up in that changed my whole thing that I want to do cancer only. Uh, unfortunately, could not go into cancers in detail and uh, shift it to infertility, but uh, that was my first exposure after my MD into cancer cervix. And then uh, we, we took part in a lot of FOXI programs. I was a FOXI chair, chairperson in the 90s. 
and in 2008 i became the president of foxy so now foxy is federation of obstetrics and gynecological societies of india it has got 38000 members and uh, it has spread over 232 cities as branches now we have 27 committees we have an oncology committee and we have a public awareness committee and we have a women's health committee and we have an imaging science and diagnostic so all these committees every year celebrate all the cancer days and we do programs on awareness with foxy every every month so there is a program on cancer cervix still eight women are dying per minute of cancer so it's as big as maternal mortality of cancer cervix and breast so we still need a lot of awareness and then we have one of our uh, foxians dr neerja batla of delhi aims who is the member of the international figo cancer cervix uh, committee so we got we we take part we took part in the uh, finding of guidelines we took part in the cancer uh, cervix evaluation and treatment guidelines uh, as uh, foxy so foxy has been very very active in cancer awareness programs all over india and it still is and this month again we saw because uh, january is the month of cancer cervix awareness so we saw a lot of programs on the 30th again foxy is doing a very huge awareness program all over india there have been some cancer cervical camps which have been organized all over india uh, by visual um, uh, in uh, examination by acetic acid test by pap smears so so a lot of work has been done but i think we still need to do more to make the public aware that this is a problem which can be cured if you come early so that that is what is the biggest challenge thank you so much dr narendra for sharing what foxy and the initiatives that you have also taken part in could you tell us some of the challenges uh, that you face and how do you think that the new technologies are helping in solving those challenges so the biggest challenge is uh, standardization biggest challenge is that uh, doctor or the uh, small small clinic in the villages or in the periphery what do they do so they put in a speculum and they write cervical erosion and that's it and probably they will take a conventional pap uh, smear if it is available probably not even that and they will not do the acetic acid test and they will not do the local sidin test for visual so via algorithms were made by us and circulated right down but still uh, to a lot of uh, teaching has to be done to the periphery doctor first so if the doctor at the periphery the primary health center or a foxy member or a gynecologist from the city goes to the primary health center and does the visual examination uh, by a standard protocol and an algorithm and has a colposcope and has a intelligent colposcope which could be carried everywhere and uh, simple logols and uh, and then probably make a very standard diagnosis whether it's coming in dysplasia whether it's just a squamous columnar junction abnormality whether it's punctate lesions whether it's uh, hyperemia what whether it's um, whatever and so then we can once we get a, a standard diagnosis from everyone then only we'll be able to do um, Uh, standard treatment and give them standard line of treatment so uh, catch this cancer or what we call as spot the cancer before it spots you and uh, that is uh, what what we gave as a slogan but and here we have uh, now a uh, visual check machine the eva which uh, we've been using since the last one and a half years in our uh, private clinic uh, we have hardly kept any charge for it but with with this and contributed to the the from the five indian centers we our center has been the one who's contributed to the artificial intelligence software which has been made from 500 doctors all over the world so this this uh, once you get that picture automatically it gives you these are the options of the diagnosis which could be you can modify the diagnosis if you think the machine is telling you wrong but then it it goes into a lot of help in standardizing the diagnosis part which is very very important coming to you dr malika how can uh, technologies like dr narendra uh, mentioned eva transform screening situation in india according to you firstly i want to thank you for having me for this webinar it's a real privilege now surely the eva has um, radically radically changed screening uh, for cervical cancer now in the sense that um, uh, 
I, you know, I have been working with Eva now for the past two to three years, and uh, in I belong to Apollo Hospital and to the Apollo Hospital Research uh, Wing. So we have done a pilot study which involved um, six centers all over uh, the south of India, and um, and we did a pilot study for the eff efficacy of Eva, and um, uh, we found that you know that. The, the, the thing about it, firstly, the device itself, um, it, it consists of these three parts, as you know, the first part being the, the device itself, where it contains the beautiful light, um, the kind of light that you have, non-polarizing, uh, glare-free light, which is, uh, which is actually loaded into this EVA, is something which is very, very useful. I mean, if you have been using a regular corposcope, you know what I'm talking about because um, it is not cumbersome and it is so easily um, inbuilt into the system. Now, in addition to this, you have um, uh, you have a 16 time magnification, which is also very good because if you were looking at something like a villi, you're looking at it with uh, just your own bare eyes. Your vision is limited, but when you can, uh, when there's an enhanced image. Um, and uh, EVA is enhanced visual analytics. So when there's an enhanced image, you definitely see much better. So like uh, Dr. Narendra was saying, you know, you can make out the, the squamo columnar junction, you can make out any abnormalities over there, you can make out punctate lesions, you can, you can put the green filter and you can change check out for vascular changes. So all of these things, that is the, the, the actual, um, uh, what you call the technology behind it, really helps you. It enhances what you are doing. You know, it enhances what you're seeing and therefore what you're diagnosing. It is much easier and therefore also more accurate. And then of course, uh, that's not the end. You also have the software. The software helps uh, an easy flow of work, if you know what I mean. Um, you're able to, you're able to, um, you know, sort of tabulate each patient into the into your device, and then you're able to put in into the same uh, framework. You're able to say what her symptoms are, her last period, her um, number of children, you know, all the basic information that you need, and it all goes into one package, and you do not have to turn pages and um, and then and then you take the images you're able to save the images under the same heading and also the other thing is the portal the portal is that you are able to actually when you have taken these images you're able to sync your work and given your clinical impression you're able to sync your work onto the portal onto the cloud wherein um, I'm sure Dr. Narendra is doing this also, wherein I am now looking at images which are taken all over India. You know, suppose somebody buys a device uh, initially um, and they are not very familiar with, um, with you know, the various, um, you know, diagnosis that you can make. Um, and uh, in that, in that uh, situation, they would send the images to me through their portal and they would share their ID with me actually. And then I would go online, find that image and give a diagnosis. So then they share the diagnosis with the patient. So, so it's like half a headache, you know, you don't have the full headache. You just have to take the images and send it. So I think this is a fantastic tool. Uh, and um, it, it, is, uh, it is well worth, you know, using. And, um, it, and, and especially, like, like Dr. Narendra pointed out, if we would use this in centers where, um, you know, doctors have not had the chance to actually, um, you know, uh, upgrade themselves and uh, or sort of spend many hours, you know, going through some kind of a, a training, that if they could just take these images, if they could take good images and send it across, you know, um, somebody could actually interpret it for them and their patient really benefits. So in one shot, everything is over. Then you don't have to first do a pap smear and then you don't have to then come back. And then, you know, uh, after that, when the report comes and then come for a corposcopy and then come back. So all that sort of, because come the patient loss to follow up is another major challenge that all of us as physicians face. So, it, it also overcomes that kind of a 
problem. So now when we're talking about uh, the screening methodologies, how has it changed for you and how what is your method to screen patients for cervical health? And over the years with the latest technologies as well, how has the practice changed for you? So now in the initial uh, years, what we did basically was that as gynecologists, we know that every woman who comes to the gynec clinic, if at all possible, we would do a pap smear. We do not want to lose that contact. So we would do a pap smear and then, you know, we would follow up. But um, in now, of course, what we do is that if when we look at the cervix, in my clinic, what I do is if I look at the cervix and it looks suspicious, I would just do the pap smear anyway, but also follow up with an EVA, which means that if I put acetovite and I find an acetovite area, if I put acetic acid and I find an acetovite area that is the change in color, it blanches, then I, I would probably, if I think it's suspicious, I would take a biopsy from it at the same sitting with the consent of the patient. Now, that's very important. So if the patient says it's okay to do it, then I would take a biopsy and I would send it across. So at one shot, everything is over. If that is not possible, then at a later date, I would, uh, I would uh, uh, sort of schedule uh, uh, an examination with the EVA and then call her in and do the same thing. So that would actually what that Thank means. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. So then what it means basically is that you save a lot of time and uh, you definitely do not lose the follow-up that you have for the patient. And um, that, that is useful. Mr. Ganesh Prasad, as a technology company, what is your view towards the prevention of uh, cervical cancer? Absolutely. I think uh, not just in cervical cancer, but as a technology company, I fundamentally believe that anything we bring in as technology should solve for a problem, should help the clinician to be able to quickly diagnose and start treatment. You know, that's the whole purpose of uh, bringing in technology in healthcare. So now, of course, now focusing on cancer, especially on women's health, if you really see, uh, you know, uh, as uh, Dr. Vijaya said, you know, cervical cancer is something which is uh, unseen. And uh, it's very important that, you know, uh, we bring in a device and not just a device which is complicated to use, but bring in a device at point of care uh, which can uh, which which uh, aligns to the workflow, which is uh, can be used in low resource settings as well, and uh, also if possible, uh, you know, bring in an ability to connect to a expert to be able to support with an uh, with an assessment, and uh, we have gone the mobile ODT team uh, who's uh, created this technology has gone one step more, and in fact uh, they have brought in the AI layer as well. To be able to, Dr. Narendra explained this. He was one of uh, uh, those, you know, who evaluated uh, this AI and participated in this global, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, global collaboration to make sure that uh, we do, we we are able to identify the right problems and uh, make sure that the AI, uh, you know, works efficiently. So uh, that's another thing which has come in as an additional layer. So. Effectively, as a technology company, what am I supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? We have to be responsible about bringing a solution uh, for a problem, not making the technology a problem. We are responsible about making it, you know, uh, 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 very, very ubiquitous. When I say ubiquitous, you know, at point of care, uh, we have to make it, we have to demystify the use uh, fundamentally that anyone can use it. Uh, Dr. Narendra was just <laughs> very nice of him to show the product itself, you can see the product is just a, it's like a mobile phone and a camera on it and a light source on it. And, you know, just point on the cervix, of course, you know, uh, like uh, Dr. Vijaya said, uh, the paramedics can be trained to put a speculum, uh, you know, put acetic acid and then uh, look at the, uh, you know, look at the cervix and then take a picture and they take the picture, they obviously they can share it. Uh, the AI layer can help you to give. So we are completely looking at end-to-end -end solving for the physician problem, which is quickly identifying, diagnosing, and starting treatment. So that's my outlook of how we should. And definitely, in uh, you know, cancer, uh, which can be prevented, you know, cervical cancer is, can be prevented, uh, you know, uh, seeing it early and making sure that it doesn't progress is a huge help. And uh, I think uh, this plays a very significant role. And I should say in the last three years, 
uh, we've done significant process, progress, great adoption. Uh, this device now is available in length and breadth of the country, uh, tie two, tie three, tie four, low resource settings. I'm sure very soon government will take notice of this and include this in their program. Gynecologists are, uh, you know, I'm so glad, glad that uh, one, of, one of my close friends, gynecologist said, it's a gynec telescope. So I love that, you know, I love them saying that, you know, come on, Ganesh, this is not a device, it's a gynec stethoscope. And that's how tight it is. So that's that's my view on what should technology be. End of the day, it should help the physician focus on the problem, diagnose accurately, do a treatment, uh, you know, that has, uh, you know, the, that, that is a clear evidence, evidence-based treatment. So, so as you mentioned how things are working, how are you working towards building awareness and what do you think are the challenges when you work towards developing a technology for something as crucial as cervical cancer? Obviously, the uh, see, we can't say that people are, uh, doctors are not aware of what's the, uh, you know, method to uh, look at or treat. Okay, when we are bringing in a disruption in technology as this, uh, we can't let uh, it to be known by doctors by themselves. You know, I firmly believe that we have a huge responsibility as a technology company to promote awareness. I don't believe in advertisement at all. Uh, you know, but awareness is important. There's a big difference between advertisement and awareness. Awareness is bringing out the value of such, bringing out the differentiating value of such, bringing out the impact that this makes in terms of, you know, reducing, uh, you know, mortality and, you know, improving uh, clinical outcomes. So uh, we've done, a, we've done a lot of, thankfully, I think we have uh, friends like Dr. Narendra, we have friends like Dr. Vidya, Dr. Malika, you know, Dr. Foxy Chairman, you know, a big influencer in the government. Obviously, you know, Dr. Malika very early in the Apollo research program incubated us, you know, uh, made a lot of effort to uh, bring in evidence to prove that, you know, this product has value because you know we are whom are we fighting uh, we are fighting you know you remember this you know we fight we are fighting the large equipment you know the same colposcope was available which was filling half your room it was like uh, the olden days of we used to have our big uh, you know transistor sets or our telephones or our big mobile phones this device was fighting that and you know and uh, to believe that a device as this can be at least as impactful as, as that is not easy for anyone to accept. And that's where we have help from, you know, uh, our friends in the community who, I mean, healthcare community who uh, we have worked for many, many years together and they trust us, they support us, they prove the evidence, they prove that these bring a value to the physician practice. And after that, obviously, you know, the uh, we have to take it across the length and breadth. And the second fundamental thing when I say awareness is training. So it's not that, you know, I just give a device and then say, it's your problem. Even as simple a device as this, you know, it's like this, you know, I always remember when iPhone came in, I was so happy. I wanted to give one to my dad. When I asked him, he said, I don't want this. It's not that he was averse to using it, but he was not, you know, ready to use that at that point in time. So it's very important to say that it's not as complex as what any one of you may think because it is small. It's so compact, but you know, it solves for a lot of complexities. So that's the training that we have to bring in, and of course the clinical training, and uh, which we have to participate with various forums as this. Uh, in association with ICCP, we did a good program. You know, we continuously do this uh, seminars. We participate in almost almost all uh, events, Foxy events. Uh, we uh, you know share the product. We allow uh, them to use it. You know, demonstrate it, bring the value. Uh, of course, these are all things that we have to do. You know, to build awareness. Awareness obviously cannot be just you know talking about the problem and leaving the solution, and also to be participating with the customers to prove as to how we can solve for. And uh, that brings in more adoption. <laughs> that brings in more adoption. And uh, that's my view of how we can participate. And we certainly believe in doing that. Uh, we have done that over many years. We did it for the ultrasound. Uh, Dr. Narendra knows this very well. Uh, when, uh, you know, for over two, three decades, we've been doing it with Dr. Narendra. And of course, for any device, I certainly believe that that's the value we can bring in as a company. We just can't be a transaction agent. We have to be uh, completely inclusive in terms of, uh, you know, participating, you know, with the, to make sure that the end use of it is realized. Thank you, Mr. Ganesh. And we really hope that uh, uh, all that you hope for and uh, you do achieve it. Uh, we also have Dr. Alexandra. Uh, Dr. Alexandra, what is the role of visual check and how has it helped you in your clinical practice? 
So, uh, hello, um, hello from Europe. Um, uh, I'm not very familiar with the screening programs in India, but we are, uh, I'm working at third year center in an academic hospital. So uh, we are currently testing EVA in two ways. One of uh, them was mentioned similarly by Dr. Malika. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. That's right. So that would be the role of EVA in a regular screening outpatient care suburbs somewhere in the middle of the country where not maybe all doctors are familiar with the screening programs. And the other way we are also testing how it can help with the very advanced teaching hospital centers where we already have patients uh, directed to us with the pre-diagnosed pathology and is, is that of any help? I mean the EVA and the quality of the picture that you described so, so perfectly. So uh, in Poland we have a very precise screening program so we don't really have the problem of pap smear. We are currently more uh, fighting for making the LBC and HPV testing more available. The pap smear is a, is a routine. Uh, but we are uh, trying to prove, and we, I think we are succeeding in, in showing that EVA actually is an additional tool that can help you with the pap smear. So as a first step of more advanced uh, expert opinion at your fingertips. So we are, uh, we are testing and working with it and treating it as our senior consultant next to a very basic resident or even maybe a midwife uh, that after a regular screening after taking the pap smear just adding acidic acid waiting 30 seconds the eva even counts the seconds for us so that's just you don't have to think about it and then uh, she rules good or bad green light or red light as as dr malika mentioned so uh we are we are checking how accurate the eva ruling is uh and then retesting patients taking biopsies if the red light appeared so uh, we we are treating the the eva device and the mobile odt system as a kind of additional help the the expert opinion uh, when the expert is not available just next door to to ask him or her and currently we can see that actually she's really good at picking up those curious cases where you thought that maybe the cervix looked good, there was no whitening, there was nothing, and she saw something, then we are retesting the patient or the patient is directed to us as I'm working in a cervical uh, pathology department. And then, yeah, there, there is something and, and the histopathology is actually confirming that. And as all the doctors uh, and distinguished guests here confirmed the most important thing is to catch those patients early at the pre-invasive uh, stages the uh, preferably hcl or lcl or how 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 soon the, the sooner the better so or even with just the hpv positive high risk hpv and just uh, warning her to to get a regular checkups and if we get that we basically saved her life so that's that's the goal and i'm pretty sure that every additional tool uh, in our country additional to cytology so i wouldn't replace the pap smear or lbc or co-test with the with eva but i assume that there are different different uh, necessary uh, additional ads in different parts of countries and different countries but adding it to a regular screening just simply improves the the quality of the medical consultation that you are giving to the patient and uh, making her being diagnosed with the cancer sooner saves her life. So that's how Eva helps us. She gives us the red light when not every doctor, especially not the advanced colposcopist, would see the red light before, before he notices it, Eva notices it, and we just do the rest. We test her, we take the biopsy, and we, we just follow with the guidelines. So I think that's that's the most important thing. It it really can every year counts in the matter of the cancer progression. So this year, one year, two years saved. I, I cannot say precisely how many, but any even months can help. So that's what Eva does. So if you had to highlight the major advantages of this uh, of having this artificial intelligence in uh, cervical health screening devices, what would those be? Uh, that's what, what Dr. Narenda said. It's, it's, it's tiny, it's very high quality, it's packed with technology. 
um, from, for, for us with many patients in the hospitals or in our private practice, it's important that it works fast. It doesn't need you to, to prolong your visit because it takes 30 seconds for acidic acid to work. Also, it doesn't stain your workplace with different, uh, different stains that we, we also use sometimes, iodine and so on and so on. And just acidic acid is pretty clear and, and safe, I would say, easy to, to clean. Uh, and after 30 seconds, uh, you don't even need to touch the device to take the photo. You just wave and it takes the perfect quality high resolution photo that you can um, analyze yourself you can then uh, view not only on the screen on the device but you can see it uh, on your laptop or your computer or on your uh, tv even if you do want probably and uh, you can analyze it yourself you can send it to your colleagues experts uh, in the in the colposcopy field um, and you can also partially at least because it's in the trial so I cannot say you can rely 100% but hopefully you will be able to rely on the decision of this artificial intelligence the mysterious cloud ruling uh, god of colposcopy who really is very simple to interpret because it's either red light or green light so there's nothing simplest than that so that that's I think what what's what's what are the main advantages fast uh, not messy reliable uh, doesn't require you to prolong, prolong your visit and you get the answer immediately. You don't need to wait for your histopathology result. So I, I would say these are the top five. Thank you, Dr. Zimmer, for beautifully explaining those. Coming back to you, Dr. Vijaya, talking about prevention of cervical cancer, where is India on WHO and Ministry of Health guidelines and initiatives? As I said earlier, the doctors, uh, we are concentrating only on the uh, started with the village side because from the primary health center we are to start a screening so we've started training our nurses on um, uh, see and treat program where we did a speculum examination and see any obvious growth or ultimately they will refer uh, but the thing is uh, using them earlier we started with the via and villi uh, both uh, acetic acid and lugal iodine now we have uh, stopped that villi uh, we are doing only via with acetic acid, 5% acetic acid. And we trained our staff nurses to identify the acetovite patches. And then they will immediately refer them to a nearby district headquarters hospital. Uh, almost all of the Tamil Nadu district headquarters and medical colleges are provided with colposcopy. And uh, immediately they will be sent and we'll be, we will issue them an ID card uh, with their number and so that it will be centralized. We can follow the patient. Most important is following up the pre-invasive uh, cervical lesion uh, because it's a long journey uh, from the pre-invasive to become a cancer cervix. Uh, it takes almost 10 years. Uh, we have that much of opportunity to catch the patient before they become cancerous. So the follow-up is very, very important. And uh, the another interesting thing is uh, this colposcopy program has come under the PM insurance. Uh, so if the patient has the insurance card, automatically they need not uh, pay even a single pie and um, the subsequent treatment will be very, very free for them like cryo or uh, leap, uh, whatever procedure we are doing for a pre-invasive lesion. Um, so the only disadvantage is the colposcopy. Uh, what we have is a, a digital colposcope manual as well as uh, the video colposcope. It is not handy. That is the only thing. So the other day they came uh, to demonstrate this uh, EVA uh, and a few of my doctors. Uh, can you say the negative part of, part of it also, sir? Yes, ma'am, you can share your views. And uh, they were telling it is uh, very fragile. Suppose if we drop it, what happens? Like an I, I, uh, iPhone. It's uh, that is uh, all my assistants before I came into the panel. I just uh, called them and asked them, How are you satisfied with this EVA and uh, uh, hand colposcope so that it is very, very easy to screen and uh, treat the patient? And we can even take them for camps uh, uh, instead of taking our uh, manual colposcope. Uh, the only thing they were telling is uh, it was very, very fragile. Suppose we drop it by mistake, that's all the entire thing is gone. That is the only thing they were telling. Otherwise, the picture and everything they were clear, they were very happy about that. So, I just want to discuss about this uh, that later, uh, sir. Uh, so, apart from this. Uh, uh, this insurance coverage and following up uh, and giving them a separate ID card, that is the thing we are doing in the government. Following, uh, following up is something that is really important when it comes to cancer care. Uh, coming to Dr. Malaika, 
do what what are the do's and don'ts in prevention of cervical cancer according to you yeah the do's and don'ts of um, uh, you know screening for cervical cancer is probably what you mean now the important thing for us to know is that the recommended age for screening is from 21 to 65 now why 21 why 65 we say 21 because we know that even if um, a person has been sexually active in their teens it would still take about 10 years for a lesion to appear and therefore to do it before that will not make sense at the same time if you do it um, you need not do it after 65 because if a person has had um, pap smears or screenings which are negative for instance if you have a pap smear which is uh, negative for malignancy or they are negative for hpv at the age of 65 they have ha never had a precancerous lesion then there is no need to screen after 65 so that's the age criteria that we need to remember but we also need to remember that if a peers person is uh, immunocompromised they are diabetic or they have any history of having consumed ds in all of these cases then the interval of uh, screening would be more uh, frequent so that's one thing about the do's uh, and um, the other thing is that in pregnancy do we screen or do we not screen so this is an issue which all of us face as clinicians um i am reluctant to do a pap smear when a woman comes with her pregnancy in the first visit because i don't think her parents would her mother would like it and neither would the patient like it because they are very protective uh, of her condition right then but um it is recommended that women because the reproductive age group is the time when cervical cancer actually presents that it can be done during pregnancy when they come for their first visit during pregnancy so the other thing is uh, can pap smears be done when a person is menstruating it is better to avoid avoid having a pap smear when you're doing uh when a person is in a period because it would should definitely confuse the picture there are many other things that we need to watch out for um that is how do you keep doing a pap smear every year no you don't if a woman has had a pap smear which is negative um she you can repeat the pap smear after 3 years if you're doing a hpv or a self pap you could do a, a repeat Uh, after five years, um, whereas if you do a Pap smear and um, and and a Pap smear is coming out uh, not positive, not negative, but ascus, then you have to triage with another modality of screening, like you can do a HPV also along with the Pap, and then take it on from there. So these are the conditions that we uh, think about screening and. Um, uh screening as uh, you know with these guidelines and these guidelines that have been actually um set up by uh, the, the American College of Cancer of Colposcopes as well as the GCPR of Foxy that is the good clinical practice of Foxy guidelines so um that would be the do's and don'ts that we would think about when we are doing cervical screening Thank you so much to all the experts for sharing their views. Now uh, we have a set of questions that we've received from our attendees. So uh, without wasting any time, I'll now be beginning with the Q and A, and these will be open to all speakers. So uh, the first question is: Is cancer screening there in any of the maternal health programs or adolescent health programs? So yes, uh, the government has a cancer service, but they have it only with the visual examination. at the periphery and now they provided colposcopes to all the medical colleges and uh, so the colposcopic at the medical colleges also uh, would have a program so it is in a cancer screening program yes we have via that is visual inspection with aesthetic health that is there in the villages colposcopes are not there 
uh, but then uh, screening the college going girls or uh, talking about the hpv vaccination of course we do because that is very very important because it is not taken off in india because of the few side effects when the vaccination has started few of the cases had nausea vomiting and giddiness so they stopped the hpv vaccination now the government is into bringing the hpv vaccination and foxy is also supporting isn't it sir so so we did this in 2018 when my wife dr jeri was the president of foxy uh, the whole new program of uh, screen the mother vaccinate the daughter started yes sir. and uh, and it started from varanasi just after the foxy bangalore congress and uh, when we said there was a, a economic forum which was uh, uh, funding the whole program but when we went to the government they have the sampurna clinics and the sampurna clinics in uttar pradesh are only cancer screening free clinics and vaccinating and they bought these sampurna clinics have brought huge doses huge amount of doses of cancer cervix vaccine but they did not know how to give it so foxy helped that and we have uh, since 2018 we are now in uttar pradesh uh, vaccinating all the girls when these mothers come with the girls so we started screening the mothers by via or teaching the sampurna clinic uh, uh, worker there screen the mother put a speculum put acetoacetic acid see look at it if you have a cal colposcope there do a colposcopy and vaccinate uh, give the shot to the daughter and bring another one or your neighbor the next time so it's a very good program and it's running pretty well in uttar pradesh now thank you dr narendra the second question is are there training programs on cervical cancer given to nurses and on awareness trainings to asha workers so well uh, foxy as a society has training programs on colposcopy and cancer screening uh, through its committee for the doctors for foxy members 38000 gynecologists not see even mbbs if you're not a foxy member you can be a foxy member as mbbs the, the type 2 member non voting so you could uh, get a 6 months uh, fellowship program in foxy or a 15 day orientation course for nurses and um, for the gynecologists have not yet officially started though we are when we train the nurses under the manyata program for obstetric care we do tell them about uh, perspectulum examination of the cervix and all that things but i don't think we have a formal program running from foxy i think the government does run a, a program on uh, with asha yes, Asha workers, yes. Doctor Vijay is saying yes. Yeah, National okay. Health Mission. Yeah, that yes. National Health Mission. Sorry, sir. National Health Mission has uh, taken up the program to train the nurses. We are into treating the pre-invasive, detecting and invading, in, treating the pre-invasive lesion. So all our nurses are trained. There are separate uh, staff nurses uh, paid by the uh, NCD wing of a NHM. Uh, so the payment and the salary and the training everything is taken care by the national health mission so they do it with uh, only examination by the speculum now and if we yeah. have this device if we have this device this nurse will just has to put put the device at the speculum get a picture send that picture to the expert to vijaya to uh, aims to anywhere to us or a, or a team who looks after and that's it it becomes so simple so i think we need to take technology to where it is needed most yes, that sir. is at the periphery and if this if the technology remains only in bombay delhi goa or bombay delhi bangalore then then it's of no use here we are already aware we are doing paps lvcs we are doing direct to uh, uh, direct to slide test which are the most advanced test but this is needed where where it this is to be done where it is needed and fragile yes everything is fragile if i drop my phone whatever it is is going to break So if you drop a big colposcope, it is going to break. So then you have to be careful of not dropping. If you drop your spectacles, they'll break. So the things are fragile. Good things are always fragile. Good things are always fragile. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question is for Dr. Malika. How frequently should uh, a woman get screened for cervical cancer? and is the incidence more in the particular age in any particular age okay so as i was saying um a woman should get screened once in every 3 years if her screening is negative for cancer now um if on the other hand she has a lsi or a low or a low grade lesion or a hsi then the screening would differ according to her condition so um 
And uh, if, uh, if on the other hand, if she's having a HPV test, then she can do it once in every five years. If you're immunocompromised, then you would do it more frequently, maybe every year. Uh, um, uh, that's, that's it. And you know, the thing is that um, screening is so important. I don't know how we could emphasize to our country, um, to everyone uh, who we could reach that screening is important because um, like all our speakers have said, that in the la in 2018 there were about uh, a lack and and some people who actually had the disease of cervical cancer and about 67,000 of them who actually succumbed and died. And in spite of this scenario, only about 3.1 percent of our population of women um, who actually fall into this age group of 21 and 65 are actually getting screened, which is such a sad thing, you know. And I just wish that we could do more towards uh, getting people screened. Having said that, I am just wondering how we could probably, I know that there are a lot of NGO organizations who are dealing with cervical screening. Um, we met some of them in Hyderabad. There are some in Delhi and there's some uh, around those areas. And I, I'm sure they're pretty much um, uh, all over India. And so that, you know, it takes the load off the government to some extent. And um, yeah, and so this is so important for us to actually screen um, at a regular interval. Uh, so actually, in the government setup, we have stopped uh, taking a pap smear because uh, especially in the peripheries, uh, we need a cytologist. Uh, so there is lack of uh, manpower. So we depend only on via. Uh, so and magnavision, which will enable, magnify the cervix uh, and the staff nurses can see through the magnavision. And now this colposcope has come and uh, it's a very, very good idea. We can take it to the interior part of the states and then we can train the staff nurses and along with the fogz we the medical college gynecologists we will be interested to teach uh, uh, train the staff nurses it is a very good uh, innovative thing and also the hpv testing uh, we cannot afford at the at, at, at the present moment uh, so if the hpv testing is also a little costly and uh, that these are the two drawbacks we have uh, about this pap smear and uh, this uh, hpv testing Dr. Vijay, like you said, if, if only the EVA could be um, distributed in the primary health centers, because I know that your primary health centers have a wonderful program for screening. And like you said, Vilay, because I've had some patients of mine who are working, who are doctors in primary health centers, and then they tell us about uh, the programs that you have. And if only they also had the EVA, it would be so good, you know, it would really benefit their uh, diagnosis um, making. Anything easy is always welcome. Uh, so instead of uh, carrying that manual colposcope and digital colposcope, uh, anything handy and which can give you the same result as a, a bigger one is uh, always welcome. And if you can interpret and also you can WhatsApp or email to the consultant or the expert. So the same moment like uh, ECG, echo sharing and even CT and MRI reports are being screened and shared through WhatsApp only nowadays. Even ortho pictures, fractures and even all those digital x-rays have come. So we should also move a step in advance in gynecology it's a very welcoming movie yeah great so uh, the next question is does the technology uh, also detect hpv types behind the precancerous cervical cancer i don't think it uh, detects the types what HPV, HPV, yeah. HPV detected only by the hpv test yes yeah. so it's a dna uh, test maybe. looking at it yeah not by looking at the cervix yeah so you got to get, get the send the smear for HPV, a doer test or whatever, and then you get the HPV load, viral load, and everything, and the which type of HPV is there. Okay, so the uh, there is a next question and also a request along with it. Uh, it says, could you please explain the device and uh, what what is the added benefit if PAP and VA is done? What is the AI component? So you want me to show this device? This, this is what the device is. It's a handheld and it, you, you can put it on the um, stand and it fits in your OPD. 
So when the patient is lying down, you're doing a per speculum examination, and then you just pull the small device right there, focus, focus it in. There is a green filter here. Apply, you get a picture here after you filled up the name, and that picture automatically goes to the cloud or to your laptop where a report will be generated uh, from the 500 uh, people who have uh, classified all the pictures possible. And it will artificially, it will tell you, the artificial intelligence will tell you that this could be dysplasia one, this could be access, this could be uh, precancerous, this could be scomiculumina junction abnormality, whatever. You can modify the diagnosis if you feel the machine is telling you wrong. And of course, the very simple, so you just sit, sit uh, with a patient, patient's legs are up, and this device is right there. Even by, instead of looking straight at the spectrum, you can look at the screen. And if you look at the screen, you get the correct picture of how, uh, how uh, accurate your uh, visualization is. So it's, it's, it's very, very simple to use. It's very, very handy to use. And uh, it, it is very, very automatic. So every patient, what we are now doing is any gynec patient who comes, like someone said stethoscope. So ultrasound has been a stethoscope for the obstetrician. And this has been the stethoscope for the gynecologist. Because women, you know, in, in my OPD of 100 gynec problems, 30, 35 would be of bleeding problems. 30, 35 would be of discharge uh, problem. And uh, the rest would be uh, the others, other problems of PID, pain, et cetera, et cetera. But in all 100, I have to look at the cervix. Because even if it is bleeding, I have to look whether the bleeding is from the cervix. So if I get something which can magnify the cervical image for me, and give me a tentative diagnosis also, what, what more can I ask for? So it just simplifies my job and makes it easy and makes it very quick. Otherwise what, I do a speculum, then send her into the colposcope room, which cannot be in your OPD because your OPD is small, cramped up. You cannot have that big machine here. Or she, you call her back again, and then the colposcopist says that this is wrong, and then you post her for biopsy. Here, as uh, Ziva said, you have the red in the clip, immediately tells you a biopsy is needed, you can take it there, you can do. So it's, it's exactly, it's, it's wonderful uh, to me uh, what, what we are experiences in the last one and a half years. Okay, so the next question is, is this technology being used only in the urban districts? And uh, also he wants to know, do gynees in district hospitals use these, uh, rural district hospitals also use these technologies? I can partially answer this. Uh, adoption in private uh, as, uh, really, uh, is much, much, much more stronger, I should say, in the rural districts. Uh, because absolutely, these rural districts are places where they want quick evidence to start treatment. And uh, I'm so overwhelmed by the kind of response we have had in the Tier 2, Tier 3 towns across the country. I just said this even earlier. Obviously, on the government side, uh, district headquarters, hospitals, I mean, I'm sure someone can answer. So in the, in the government hospitals and district hospitals, I don't think we have uh, the artificial intelligence technology. So we have the, you know, we don't have. So we have the video colposcopes, which is also technology, and uh, it gives you records of video and uh, on the colposcope uh, on the screen, and you, you have to analyze it yourself. Or take an so we can connect, no, we can connect it to the computer, sir, and the laptop, and then we can send the uh, pictures yeah. to. Yeah, so you can send the pictures and get it connected as we get. Is there any other device that is available to screen cervical health screening with AI? There's none. Uh, there's none with AI. Even with the EVA, it's just that uh, we just love about launching it. Or Simon said it's in the late end of the trials, and uh, we just concluded the trials, and we are just starting to commercialize this. So there's none, you know, the, the several facets where you has, uh, you know, taken an early lead, uh, you know, the company which is making this mobile ODT has taken an early lead uh, is uh, to completely understand, you know, the problem, you know, that they're solving for and walking towards it, you know, using technology. So one fundamentally is, uh, you know, looking at how a mobile can be, mobile phone, a mobile device can be used, you know, along with a, uh, lens and a light source to be able to make it, you know, at point of care as ubiquitous as it can be. The second obviously is to answer to Dr. Vijay's question and Vijay's point, uh, and of course the question which came up, uh, you know, they have designed a beautiful stand, 
you know, uh, you know, to make sure that you know it's less on the stand, uh, and the stand is as portable as well. You can just fold; it's like a tripod. You could just fold it, and you can take it, and you can hold it on that. So that the chances of dropping, the chances of dropping it during an exam is when it is the highest. You know, so that's taken care as well. And uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, there's a very good case, you know, to transport so that you know you don't have to worry about the breakage during the transit. So that's a very interesting thing. And when they realize that you know this device was gaining traction and you know a lot of interest across the world they quickly you know brought in AI and not just for you know saying is a problem or no problem you need to help to ensure that the first thing that the AI does is to show that the image you've taken is good enough that's the first thing you know because somebody should know that the image have i taken is it good enough for me to be able to make a diagnosis on it if it does if the image is not good enough it's not going to you know uh, go to the next step so that's another very interesting you know way of you know making sure that the picture that you are taken is the right picture to take and you're not making even sure that you have to click something you just wave it wave and then you know it clicks when you look at the cervix when you're okay with the image you wave and it clicks and uh, then even then to make sure that you know it's the right picture or you have to take another picture if the right picture then it gives you an early evidence dr simmer said this very beautifully so even before we could figure this out the uh, eva here the visual check figures it out and tells us come on there's some problem look at it now don't let it go and uh, you know this is a very very interesting this product has been so beautifully thoughtfully uh, designed uh, you know its workflow uh, ease of use and of course the uh, advances and i clearly don't think that there's anything today as comprehensive as this uh, you know available uh, you know for uh, visual check i just want to add uh, to doc, what uh, to mr ganesh has been saying um you know the national uh, cancer association in the us um they are the ones who actually worked along with modt so uh, what they have said is that you know when you do a pap smear it is just 70% uh, accurate or sensitivity is only about 70% but when you actually get this artificial intelligence um you could get about a 90% um uh, sensitivity and an accuracy in the reporting because uh, they have actually pulled in um suppose you're looking at uh, hsil or cin2 they've pulled in so many images and then studied it uh, with the computer technology and uh, like ganesh was saying the first thing that the um, uh, the artificial intelligence will do or the um, a will do is actually to see if this is cervical tissue and just like the pethesta system of uh, of of um, uh, screening Uh, it will tell you whether the specimen is adequate isn't it and then only it will start um, the next thing which is to actually say whether you know the which, which is actually to detect any hot spots on your screen so i think that is really amazing so uh, these questions are open to all while cervical tests and screenings are being done are there any issues that you face due to lack of standards in the system Yeah, very much will be there because sir, I'll answer sir after that. Yeah, please, yeah, please, please. Yeah, uh, because uh, it needs lot of training and practice. Uh, everything will look up, become abnormal and will look abnormal when you magnify and see. It will be very scary. Even uh, this uh, squamous columnar junction, the transformation zone, the new one, the old one. What you do if you don't see the transformation zone to make them clear and understanding? You need to go on seeing the colposcopic pictures, and slowly, only you will get used. This is normal. This is abnormal. So it takes really a lot of time. You cannot because everything will look, become ab look abnormal. Doesn't matter even for the staff nurses. Even if it looks abnormal, they can, as he said, they can. Uh, transport the pictures to us uh, and we will give them the correct uh, idea or the diagnosis so it uh, really needs a good experience to interpret the colposcopic pictures because we ourselves save so many doubtful pictures and uh, get to uh, i mean uh, discuss with our uh, own colleagues and uh, colposcopists and then come to a diagnosis so it's not that easy to interpret a colposcopic pictures i'm sure on that Absolutely, I was just adding to that. Uh, thanks, Dr. Vijaya, for taking the lead and answering this question. You know, the whole effort should be to reduce the learning curve. You know, because 
everything needs learning without learning you can't absolutely say that you know i am I, i can have an, i have an evidence but in my view uh, the way this product is designed the way the visual check is designed uh, terrifically shortens the learning curve uh, and that's absolutely something which uh, uh, you know is going to make more adoption you know adoption is always with the fear that am i may over seeing something am i may not seeing something uh, so now if the system through its uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence can shorten the learning curve to give you that confidence that expands adoption so the, those those are considered in this equipment so which is what i wanted to share so the next question is also for you uh, mr ganesh someone wants to know does this a uh, device needs to be connected to a computer software especially in rural areas example in uh, distance screening camps no you don't have to this is this itself is like an handphone you know it's like a device so right you know you can just push it from the uh, you know the device itself and you know at the receiving end obviously you know they should have a device, they should have a uh, you know ability to be able to see it you know they can have a you know computer or whatever but at the transmitting end it is just this device there is nothing else that needed beyond this device uh, the, the picture is transferable through whatsapp this directly goes madam you don't have, whatsapp interface is not even needed because you can just push this to uh, whomever you are you know connected in the system so uh whatsapp uh, we can't do a whatsapp from the uh, device uh, that's not possible you can uh, make the pictures isn't it yeah 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 correct yeah you can mail it you can put it on the cloud you can yeah yeah we can it. mail it we can't whatsapp it we can put okay. it on the cloud and you can pick it from there yeah the next question is uh how cost effective is this for the patient dr narendra said is not charging any So it can be it can be as low as that so, uh, so you are going to give uh, supply freely to all of us why not yeah. for tam for tamil nadu government we'll work out a program <laughs> so <laughs> okay I, i i come from there so let's work out something <laughs> okay. in uh, as far as uh, when i introduced uh, eva into apollo first med hospital um i had the cooperation of my um what you call it the gm there so i had put it at a very low cost so i we charge i think uh, 600 rupees uh, for a, for the device screening and then of course the extra things that treatment room charges that that will be there so but oh, it is a, it is a very low cost compared uh, to yeah know, another uh, another uh, suggestion is uh, yeah after you madam Uh, another suggestion is you can incorporate into the mass health program check up in what tamil nadu government is having in almost all the uh, government hospitals uh, it could be done at a lower cost it will be uh, really helpful in screening uh, mr ganesh absolutely madam i think we should work together on this okay. i think uh, we should I, i will come and speak you and uh, okay. let's see how to put this together that would really be good i mean if this could be incorporated into the government and then slowly in medical centers that would be the best that thing that would be the best because it it has to go where it is needed absolutely absolutely, absolutely. So what what i am doing is i've got this uh, tripod on my opd huh. and I, as i do a per speculum i just take a picture just for my sake just to magnify it yeah. if the patient further needs uh, a reporting and everything then she has to pay 500 bucks for so that is how we are doing otherwise we are looking at all the service through this Uh, without uh, charging anything it comes in the consultation fee well oh, that's that's very good do you do it even during the corona times are you brave enough to uh, we were the only <laughs> hospital in agra working in corona times as a non covid hospital so we did we did have to work but though the women did i mean suddenly all the women's diseases vanished huh? they all got well yeah. i know that's what <laughs> i'm glad no, one, that you're saying the same thing one one interesting thing dr malika this corona times you know gives me a perspective to this you know uh, we have to if the, the if the doctor had to you know be evaluated into to be doing this procedure yeah you know, this is a trained staff nurse doing it yeah they can be on a ppe you know they can be safe and uh-huh. the picture yeah. can be transferred now just yeah. imagine if you know the doctor had to do it and not the nurse or not the yeah. paramedic you know it would be even more difficult you know so 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 the way that it is ubiquitous the way it's you, you can be used by a staff nurse you know who can obviously be completely protected with the pp and uh, you know she can use it and uh, the specialist can remotely look at it 
Mm-hmm. AA comes in handy to make sure that you know we're not missing anything. Uh, so it's a you know I think even during Corona or post Corona times. probably you know uh, this this is even more uh, user friendly uh, yeah. you know and uh, you know can uh, can make sure that we don't miss i definitely don't believe that women uh, women problems have gone down women don't normally tell their problems during corona probably they're not at all telling so that's the only thing so that that we should not take that as the uh, i don't want to take that as the uh, uh, you know way out but uh, certainly we have to promote this women wellness is paramount and uh, awareness uh, you know towards women's wellness devices has this and these are not just devices which talk about a problem you know we have a solution we have government programs we have a easy solution a prevention as an opportunity how do we miss this so we should not at all absolutely but talking about pps i think uh, even we have got fed up of wearing pps so now yes. even during surgery um we just wear a face shield with an n95 and hope for the best you know <laughs> so yeah that's true yeah so uh, the next question is what are the limiting factors to doctors in adopting the system what well, they have to buy the machine <laughs> every, everyone, everyone feels everyone feels everything is expensive so Absolutely. So Danish has to do something for that. Yeah. And, and of Absolutely. Course, learning, I, I totally agree. Learning that. curve I is don't... not too great. Learning curve is not too great or too big. So it's very easy to learn. And then the second thing which our gynecs uh, are is that they they are even in the medical colleges, district hospital, and even in private, the workload work is too much. So people are seeing forty, fifty patients every day. uh in 6 hours or 7 hours so it's like quick lie down it's uh we took a we, we did a survey and we saw that for a pregnant woman indian gynecologists see them only for 2 minutes average that's no use at all so that's 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 the another limiting factor so you got to if you want to give good services you got to give good time to the patient so don't see I, i'm sure in europe you don't see more than 10 patients a day zimmer We do. You, you do. do? <laughs> how, how many patients do you see per in in an OP in an outpatient? Ah, uh, well, it depends on the timing. It probably depends on the private care and uh, the public okay. one. Okay. But so, it is approximately thirty to fifty patients a day, I would say. Wow. But it is. No, this is. It's this not is six the hours. We not usually not work longer person. hours. Okay. Zimmer, Zimmer, is it a single person seeing fifty patients? uh my personal record was around 40 something so yeah but when we don't work so just are, hours we usually prolong the hours yeah we are seeing 50 plus every day 365 days of year okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how do these doctors uh, uh, try for 10 20 minutes uh, so that that mindset has to change so interestingly uh, dr uh, dr narendra i think this brings us to a very important point you know uh, gone are the days when you know uh, you know obstetricians and gynecologists used to almost do everything right from temperature checking temperature to checking the blood so pressure that is exactly you have to build up your paramedical yeah, absolutely, uh, right. training so yeah. well that half of the your work should have been should do uh, the yeah, nurses yeah. and your so, assistant should be doing yeah so when you make it as a protocol you are an expert, you are an expert. so all these things should be done and then come to you or on your screen that Absolutely. is exactly what we have been talking about yeah because we have to just make it as a protocol make sure that during the waiting time there's somebody who's checking all this and you have everything on the on your desktop and when the patient comes you almost know everything uh, that you have to look out for and devices has this gives you the opportunity to do that just imagine a paramedic doing a big colposcopic examination and then sending it's not going to work at all but devices like this can be used you know so we have to leverage we have to change the time change our protocols make it seamlessly integrated in workflow and free up time for gynecologists and specialists absolutely i think that would be a great idea well uh, that brings us to the end of a q and a session and uh, now that we are indeed uh, we have indeed witnessed a very insightful session with a lot of takeaways on importance of screening and how use of new technologies and 
uh, how these are actually helping us in faster detection and prevention of cervical cancer. A question and a special request to all the speakers before we conclude, in sync with the multiple efforts that you have been doing on reducing cervical cancer, what would, what would be your one message uh, to the people who are watching us today? So my, my take is that women have what we call as her unspoken problems. And a lot of time you have to bring out these problems by talking to them. So you need to be very empathetic, sympathetic towards them and try to bring out these problems. And for cancer cervix, I would say, uh, screen the mother, vaccinate the daughter. Then only by 2030, uh, which is our goal in the SDGs, we could bring down or uh, finish off cancer cervix. Now this is two of the cancers which we can, by vaccinating, eliminate. The liver cancer by hepatitis B vaccination and cancer cervix by HPV vaccination. So why don't we do it? Thank you, Dr. Narendra. Uh, Ms. Zimmer, uh, Ms. Zimmer it's, uh, what, what would be your message? I will be happy to be the last one uh, after distinguished professors here, really. I don't mind. So. <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. Malika. Yeah, actually, uh, my actual heartfelt plea to everyone is uh, please be screened for cervical cancer. You know, um, uh, you can prevent uh, some terrible calamity for yourself, for your whole family, if only you would be screened. And the other thing is also, like Dr. Narendra was saying, get vaccinations. I don't know why uh, people are reluctant. Uh, they say, uh, let us see what happens, you know. Um, there are few people who are willing and happy to get vaccinated, but a lot of them don't want to vaccinate their daughters um, or, you know, go through screening themselves. So my real earnest plea would be, please do this. And, um, and uh, for all doctors who are watching, please engage very actively in cervical screening. And um, also, if you could get an EVA device, uh, let that be a part of your armentarium. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Malika. Uh, your message, Dr. Vijay. Yeah, being in government service for so long, I definitely want to take this to the interior of uh, Tamil Nadu. I want uh, Tamil Nadu to become the best in everything in India. So I really want uh, everyone to take this as an opportunity to screen our uh, uh, village health nurse, uh, urban health nurse, and the staff nurses uh, to train them in colposcopy. Uh, we would be much happier in cooperating with the FOGSI and also others. Mr. Ganesh, what would be your message? So my message is obviously to the healthcare providers, the doctors, to uh, to not uh, to create it uh, to make it feel easy for the uh, women to be able to think about it as another routine exam, you know if you can make it as simple as that, you know it's like you know when you call it a gynec stethoscope, so it just make them feel like you know you are using a stethoscope on them, so they don't they're under no stress or fear about you know a diagnostic procedure. So now just imagine, uh, you know they have to go to a diagnostic center to do a procedure, to do a, you know, pap smear or whatever, versus you're doing at point of care and uh, to be able to treat immediately when there's a solution available and a prevention possible, I think we should make it available for everyone. That's my, uh, that's my, my way of looking at it. So if it is not, we don't have to, we can't do much. A solution is available and a prevention opportunity is possible. So let's make it work. Uh, we will do our best from our side. I'm sure government will do private. I'm sure Foxy will play a significant role. But uh, I think together we can uh, absolutely uh, eradicate this. You know, we can make sure that we prevent this and uh, we don't have to be worrying about mortality rates. We can't be, we, can, we, don't, we, we don't even have to, we should not even worry about, you know, uh, cancer rates. You know, everything should be prevented before the cancer itself. Finally, your message, Dr. Zimmer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will go for screening. And if you see anything pathological or you're not an expert, uh, just make a fast referral to someone who knows what to do and who takes a histopathology testing. That's the basics. I, I saw a question was, do we treat without it? No, it's, it's a golden standard, but do it fast every minute, day, week counts. That would be it. Thank you. Absolutely.
Thank you, Dr. Zimmer, and thank you to all the experts. These were great takeaways, and uh, there is a lot of lot to discuss, and a lot of discussion needs to go into accepting uh, technology even in healthcare because there is a public good in it. But uh, for this panel discussion, we will leave it here. Appreciate all the speakers for joining us for the live webinar on the impact of artificial intelligence in cervical health screening. A big thank you to all our attendees for tuning in. Thank you so much.